As you may well know, earlier this morning, the Secretary of State for DCMS announced that we're publishing a new national data strategy. He called it an ambitious pro-growth and pro-innovation declaration of intent for the use of data in the UK. So what does that actually mean? I'm delighted to be here today to be able to cover the background to the national data strategy, uh, to maybe discuss a bit why we need a national data strategy, the strategy itself, and steps, including consultation, and some questions for you before we open to questions from me. So I think the first thing to ask is, how have we come here? Delivering a national data strategy is a long-standing government commitment, and many of you in the room have been part of this journey, some of you for longer than me. Indeed, Gavin's maps of data in government were actually quite useful when I was all but a job application. Um, as you know, there have been some stops and starts, and I'm sure I've already seen some questions on this. But in June 2019, the team launched a call for evidence that received over 100 responses alongside stakeholder engagement with over 250 organisations. And actually, evidence and stakeholder engagement has been core to the development of the strategy to date and will continue to be core to its development as we very much see ourselves as being in the middle of a conversation. To date, we've engaged with hundreds of policy officials across government and over 250 external organisations hosting over 20 roundtables and one ill-fated public event uh, that then fell foul of the pre-election period in carrying out any other. So I think the question of why a strategy is interesting, and I think there's a big difference in understandings of strategy. So my background is more data strategy, as I'd call it, business as usual, a business as usual data strategy. And I think there's a big difference between that, what we expect of a government strategy and what we expect in grand strategy. As the slide lays out, as a government data strategy, the national data strategy sets Her Majesty Government's ambition, brings a narrative into one place, proposes a framework for policy development that we're consulting on, and sets out through the missions and associated actions a commitment to action, which will again be reinforced as we come back to you with the response to the consultation and the next steps. And I think this was needed. There have been many bites of the apple, many strategies, many policies and roadmaps. And we're still in this conversation, but I do think there's value in proposing a unifying structure and rationale. Now, as a business as usual data strategy, I can think we can think of this as a start of a 10. Um, when we're thinking about business as usual data strategy, I think we're really thinking about the government data strategy implicit in the NDS. And I think through the third mission in the national data strategy, we set out that government is going to transform its use of data. We know this is something that we need to be doing. We, we have had the National Audit Office report and we are showing the beginning of the concrete steps to be reinforced in the months and years to come that we're taking to achieve government's transformation of its use of data. And we've set out five areas of ambition for the government use of data and really laid out some concrete steps, including the commitment to have a CDO as well as a chief digital officer and some areas of focus that we'll be using with, for example, spend controls to think about how we think about standards in government. But what about strategy qua strategy? I think what we have here is, and again, this is the beginning of a conversation or indeed halfway through. So we have the why, the opportunities. I will not spend a lot of time talking to data people about the opportunities. We have the what, the blockers and enablers that we've identified in the pillars. And then we have the beginning of the how, not just the activities themselves, but the missions as the unifying logic of what is prioritised. So what does that look like? Um, differently from the document, I'm going to start from the bottom up. So the pillars are the result of the evidence that we've collected, stakeholder engagement and analysis to date. And we've essentially identified four core pillars of better data use that need addressing. One is we need to get the basics right. We need data to be collected, stored and deleted, frankly, in standardised ways that can work across modern, future-proof systems. We need that data to be of sufficient quality. Secondly, the data is fit for purpose. We need to ensure that people have the skills they need for a data-driven economy and data-rich lives. And that can be from really foundational data skills that just allow you to, to function, let's say, through to some incredibly specialised data skills that maybe only 300 people in the whole of the UK need. Thirdly, if we have the data, we can use the data. We, we must ensure that data is accessed appropriately. We need to do more to make that data available through better coordination and sharing across the public, private and third sectors, as well as internationally. As someone who's moved around between sectors and between areas in my career, I'm really keen that the value often is at the intersection of things. And we can't just think about government data or private data, private sector data. We need to think about how we utilise those across the piece. Finally, as we drive innovation research, we need data used to be responsible and underpinned by trust. That means collecting, storing, using and deleting data in a way that's lawful, secure, 
fair, ethical, sustainable and accountable. We have a well-respected data regime and we are well known for our pragmatic approach to regulation. And I think we can build on government initiatives such as the data ethics framework as we move to ensure that data is used in a way that is responsible. Now, the pillars that we've identified are key to unlocking the power of data for the UK. But to the rise to the challenge, we've identified five missions that we must prioritise now. These are unlocking the value of data across the economy, ensuring that government understands where it should and where it shouldn't intervene to ensure that data is available as is appropriate in the wider economy. It means securing a pro-growth and trusted data regime um, that has the right balance between allowing for growth, ensuring that individuals are, understand how their data are used and are comfortable with that use. We must ensure that government's use of data is transformed to drive efficiency and improve public services for example, through building common data standards and interoperable infrastructure, building world-class skills and leadership, and increasing understanding of the benefits of data in conversation with the public. Fourth, as we increase our reliance on data, we must also ensure the security and resilience of the infrastructure on which data relies on. And I'm really excited that this is the first step of showing that the infrastructure the data relies on is a vital national asset, and government must understand how best to protect it from both established and new and emerging risks. And lastly, we must, we must recognise and make the most of the vital role that data plays internationally. The UK should be a global champion of data use and will promote best practice both domestically and internationally to ensure data can be used to its full potential. So why? The strategy identifies five key areas of opportunity, I'll let you guess which pictures which. We think that, and this is very much underpinned by what we've done with the Government Office for Science, who released their report today. And with them, we've identified five concrete and significant opportunities for data to positively transform the UK, boosting productivity and change, supporting new businesses and jobs to help people like me that are now in jobs they never even heard of when they're at university, to increase the speed, efficiency and scope of scientific research, as we've seen with the recent incredibly accelerated coronavirus vaccine trials. We're driving better delivery of policy and public services and incredibly close to my heart asking how we use data to create a fairer society for us all. Um, as I think some of you will know, I have a long history in looking at how we use data to understand and respond to homelessness more effectively. And I think there's so much value when the third sector especially is enabled to use data between organisations to really understand and get under the skin of problems. So what's next? This is not the end of the journey. We're keen for stakeholders to contribute and to really you know, scrutinise what we're doing and contribute to the missions, the areas of focus and our policy proposals. The National Data Strategy can now be found online and the consultation period will be open for 12 weeks, closing just shy of midnight on the 2nd of December. Now, before I hand over to you, I have two key questions. There are about 19, I think, in the consultation. But I thought that to really um, harness the conversation, I wanted to ask, have we identified the right priorities for the National Data Strategy? And are there any other areas that you think the government should explore in further depth? And I'm guessing that's my time. So thank you.